I grew up in New York City and moved from there to rural Tennessee when I was 30 years old. I was ready for a big change in my life, looking for less stress and a healthier way of life. The community I became part of was started 20 years earlier, amidst a wave of back-to-the-land migration among youth in the United States. In the community, I got involved in gardening and cooking food for people. Out of these interests developed my curiosity about fermentation, which has taken me so many unexpected places, and now China. China is a society in flux, rapidly going through massive changes. In the past few decades, it has spawned many huge metropolises, some of the biggest in the world. You see the results simply by traveling in the rural world, where villages are inhabited by elders and children, while most of the young adults go to urban centers in search of jobs and opportunity. But during our time in Yunnan province, we've been able to witness a flip side of China's urbanization, an emerging back-to-the-land movement of young Chinese people who have grown disillusioned with urban lifestyles and are moving to the countryside in search of another way of life. Take Chong Yi and Yanzi, a couple from Wuhan who moved to Dali to get away from pollution and stress. We meet them at their Mongolian yurt in a field just outside of Dali. They homeschool their children, read back to the land classics, and have enough time for things they were too busy to do in the city, like pickling. It's so exciting to meet people here who are part of a demographic wave so similar to my own, because it means that amidst China's rapid urbanization, there's a countervailing force seeking connection to nature and the land and recognizing the importance of once ubiquitous processes like fermentation. Throughout our journey through southwestern China, we've mostly encountered fermentation among older generations or in traditional village settings. It's great to meet young people who are reconnecting to these traditional practices. Take you, who has a part-time job in a city nearby but spends most of her time in Dali cultivating and sharing her passion for rare fermented teas. Or Mrs. Wang, a local who studied in Beijing but moved back to Dali and found a new vocation in natural indigo dyeing, traditional to Yunnan's Bai minority. She's renovated an old courtyard house and involved the local community in reviving this ancient art that also comes from fermented pigments in a way that speaks to the tastes of urban consumers. Dali is attracting foreigners too. Evan is from Louisiana but came to work in China and moved to Dali with his Chinese wife and their baby. They bought a courtyard house, and in his spare time, he's pursuing his passion for brewing delicious beers and spirits. Again, fermentation. As a chef and a professional pickler, I'm interested to see how this trend for innovation translates in the local restaurant culture. We travel to Yunnan's provincial capital, Kunming, to visit Tusheng Shiguan one of the first examples of an organic farm-to-table restaurant in the city. We meet with Li Fen, the founder of the restaurant. She grew up on a farm and then moved to the city for her studies, but found herself missing all the flavors of her childhood. She opened Tusheng to find these flavors again, sourcing ingredients from her family farm and their neighbors. As her demand grew, other farmers from the same village switched to organic farming. Not only is it encouraging to see a woman entrepreneur in action, but it's also great to see how unfussy the Chinese response is to sourcing organic and locally grown. The village elders still remember the old way, how things were done before commercial feed and excessive use of herbicides and pesticides. We've collected so many ingredients throughout our journey, and after so many nights away from my home, I'm also itching to work in the kitchen. Happy now? I'm so happy you're having me. Li Fen offers to collaborate, so we decide to cook a meal for the restaurant staff, including some of the fun fermented items we've encountered along our way. In honor of Li Fen, who just came back from Terra Madre in Italy, we start with a dish inspired by potato gnocchi. We can't find a masher for the potatoes, but everyone seems able to come up with an alternative technique. 
Our table suddenly turns into a potato smashing cultural exchange. For an added touch of color, we mix half of the dough with the pulp of a red beetroot. To season them, I'm going to toss them in a sauce made with doubanjiang, the earthy fermented chili bean paste we encountered in Sichuan province. The tops of the beets from Li Fen's parents' farm will add a lovely crunch. To top them off, I'm going to use some of the cow milk cheese we discovered here in Yunnan, the delicious rubbery rushan. To preserve its unique texture, I shred it finely to sprinkle it on top of the gnocchi, a bit like parmesan. For the second dish, I use some dolce, the savory fermented bean balls typical of southwest China. They almost feel like homemade bouillon cubes. I want to showcase their intense umami by slicing them thick and stir frying them together with pork belly slices and crunchy cabbage leaves. This dish is inspired by hui guo ro, twice cooked pork, a classic home style recipe we encountered in Sichuan. Our last dish is a salad made with crispy lettuce leaves. Inspired by Yunnanese cuisine, we mix in a big bunch of pungent fresh mint. We dress it with a Chinese-style vinaigrette, sweetened with a spoonful of melted ding ding tang, the malt sugar taffy used by expert Chinese picklers in their brines. We also throw in a few bright purple slices of boiled beetroot. To finish the salad, we deep fry our remaining Yunnanese cheese in the traditional way, turning it into golden crispy cheese croutons. How fun to conclude our amazing journey exploring food fermentation in southwest China by winding up with a three-course meal. I'm well accustomed to the rewards that come with rolling up your sleeves and making food for a large group of people to enjoy. We all dove in wholeheartedly discussing ingredients and coming up with a plan. By the end of the day, we were comrades. Our heads filled with new memories, our mouths still savoring the complex, adventurous flavors of Chinese fermented food. <laughs> The team at the restaurant, like the Back to the Landers we met in Dali, recognized the importance of traditional food practices. But China's incredible fermentation legacy needs more people like them if these practices are to persist. Our trip to China is coming to an end. I'm so grateful to get a glimpse of Chinese food culture, but it's also whet my appetite to learn more about the diversity of Chinese culinary practices. I look forward to returning, seeing other parts of China, and learning more about the cuisines and the roots of fermentation in this vast and ancient land. <laughs>